わからないけど。<笑>ずっと前から願いですね。I'm not sure if it takes a lifetime, but I wished for quite a while,、um, having made uh, uh, many uh, works in cell animation, that I could、uh, find a, a way to、uh, get at people's feelings and what is in people's hearts in a,、uh, a better way.、Uh, that was a strong feeling I had, that I couldn't do that with cell animation anymore. And I think in the US too,、um, they shifted from doing、uh, straight cell animation to、uh, three dimensional. Uh, type of animation. But what I wanted to do was to go toward more drawing and, and showing in pictures uh, what uh, is in people's hearts. I think what Takahata said is very valuable for artists and animators. His thinking about line should be in consideration. Hello, my name is Akash Rajput, and this time, story of line. Well, Paul Klee once said that a dot which went for a walk. Is a line. A line will remain a line until the both ends meet together. And no matter how much wobbly and jiggly the line is, and if they get matched, we can have a shape. It's a question for you that what we can say through the implication of line. By making a line, we can almost clarify a positivity and negativity in the space. Like an impression on a blank canvas. You can create something to follow, something to hold. More often, you present a line as a guiding thing which leads you to somewhere. Line can be very technical in terms of guidance, and one clear example is the lines of perspective. It can lead us directly towards where the main subject is lying or the main theme is focusing. That this is important. This is something which is really important. A line can make a frame. A frame, you will notice how often this is used as a method. And not only just frame, but also frame within a frame. Many times it creates a boundary outside the subject or inside the subject. But it's not only a technical thing, but also it's an emotional one. That what emotion. A line can hold. Is it sketchy? Is it bold? Is it creating a contrast between the background and the foreground? Does the line presenting the weakness of a person, or is this defining the strength in the image? Is it wiry, or is it strong? Is there any movement which is injecting the life in that image? A smooth line can endure the inner feeling of control, that the artist has control, and the fragmented lines can create disorder. And it can evoke the emotion of less control or disturbance on psychological level. Maybe the zigzag pattern of the lines can create an unease inside you. And maybe. It is portraying the momentum on the surface through its diagonality. Or the horizontal line can manifest the vastness of the character's intention heroic, calm, peaceful. The grotesque lines can be lustful and full of betrayal, which depicts the perceptual response of the artist, the disconnect or disappointment or disjoint from the society or social and religious belief. Susanna and the Elders. This is one of the masterpieces by Francis Newton Souza, yeah, F. N. Souza. The style is hard, thick lines in multiple layers on the canvas, and the depiction is expressionistic graffiti on the face of church. The painting as a theme actually required that presentation, that grotesque presentation, because rape and betrayal is not a divine subject, it's not something to worship. If we compare the work from the period of Renaissance who had worked on the same theme, we will get massive difference. In one painting, there is a drama going on in such a naturalistic manner, and on the other hand, it's the complete opposite of Suzas' depiction. He even said that Renaissance painters painted men and women, making them look like angels. I paint for angels to show them. What men and women really look like. In here, 
one is preceding the delusion of line and the other is well it's an expression of line and after all of this i want to ask you the question is there any subconscious effect of line in our mind like do the multiple lines making some kind of a frame or generating the surrounding border of the subject or the lines are out from the frame sometimes you can even feel that when it's not even there sayed hader raza is an indian artist he almost excluded the functionality of line in his painting he leave the areas where the line can exist but never paint there and that's how we get imaginary line in a painting it's not the line but it's an illusion of line he is saying almost secretly that things exists beyond the boundaries it's not necessary that you should draw a harsh line to create a line to give an impression of line it can be presented as the idea of line which is conceptual and abstract at the same time through the line i think you can express almost everything let's talk about approach of line in different zones where the west was focusing on more scientific approach in a painting like lines of perspective which simply guides the viewer towards the subject and nothing exists out from the natural depiction of the theme it shows how it is and the viewer has no enough freedom to go beyond it well east remain stick towards the conceptual approach of the line where everything exists on the surface of the canvas but yet things can go sharply impressionistic where you can enter in the realms of abstract oh no we're two dimensional that's stage 3 we're getting nowhere that because nothing exists in three dimensional world which we know it alters our senses and sparks a new way of seeing a 3d form can give you a sense of realism but it is also offers the limitation sometime where 2d can be so abstract that the forms get dilute in the surface of the canvas and then the shape emerge in the space It's the perfect encapsulation of two-dimensional art form where West is profoundly supporting the statement that nature doesn't produce line. Well, at this point, we should know what nature doesn't produce, we produce that. Is this solely meant for conceptualization of the line? It talks about the funness what line can produce and the academic naturalism came from West. Well, academic naturalism majorly focuses on dilution of the line where indian traditional methods tell to evoke the strength of the line such as uh, patachitra gond art madhubani art and many more the all indian folk arts and one thing which is common in all the implication of line line are visible nearly in each art form that saying that line is the fundamental part of indian aesthetics Indian traditional artists avoided the theory of imitation from the ideals they proposed a new one rather than copying from nature in order to copying from nature we are looking it backward we will going to pursue things as already they are there is nothing we can discuss more about these things and well we don't portray the reality in the work of art we portray the essential expression of the reality because imitating the same what you see is the notion which already exist in the world and by doing this you can almost murder the offerings of art and after all art loses its imagination if we simply copy that the precise thinking about the line why is it is so important to understand the role of line in art and before you give the answer i want to ask you something that what is this
one thing if i would like to focus about the lines is that the rhythm in this animation you have experienced a connection between line and rhythm the line has that unspoken ceremony of rhythm which is always there in nearly every single work of art line has always a thematic connection with rhythm it is something when an element of art meets with principle of art line is a concept in indian art and it's a rhythmic dance on two dimensional surface take the painting painted by jamini roy in the work of jamini roy the line is presented as a border of everything if it's an eye we will see a clear bold eye with thick line resemblance with actual leaf if it's in hand it will has its own separation realism is never a focal point here because these are contemporary kalighat paintings in traditional style conceptualization is more important than achieving realism and if i take the example of indian artist ram kumar ram kumar is a very different artist his approach is totally abstract in terms of line we can see hard sketchy lines in his paintings and and in his print works the portrayal of indian people these have clear influence of indian folk style like uh, in this lithograph the two sisters but he goes more abstract in landscapes and cityscapes of india look at this painting of varanasi it doesn't seems varanasi but yes it is at least from the perspective of ram kumar landscapes are more often presented with the feel of calmness peacefulness ram kumar altered this feeling this nature of landscape through his lines there are many great indian artists and i don't have enough time to discuss all of them so let's talk about animation of line in this new medium of television and cinema well west is constantly trying to achieve photorealism in their animation works i'm not saying that west never did two dimensional animation but it never utilized that as an expressive medium i think animation never started with the idea of that there are some great artists and directors who understand this part and taking a very great initiative in order to create something rich something innovative like a 2018 release Spider-Man to Spider-Man. One thing we wanted to do with this movie is bring the hand of the artist back, bring line drawings back into it. Basically bring more of the art back into it. So it's not just the computer, it's the hand of the artist in there as well. 127 animators of this film were working on the single fundamental that we can make each frame of the movie a comic book page. If you zoom in, you will be able to see the outlines of the characters faces and if you look more closely you will get the line texture on every single thing comic books actually are really expressive because they're hand drawn specifically all the characters expressions are drawn with line work and when you have all that line work it's really easy to create a really definitive emotion you know character raises an eyebrow you just draw that eyebrow if there was a way to keep all the line work on a character's face and Josh Beveridge and Danny their teams found ways to actually animate to create like dimensional line work on the character's face there was no intention to achieve photorealism cause we can express more without that and this part made this film different from other animated films take another example of loving vincent the film is entirely made with brush strokes director and filmmaker dorota kobila and hughes wackman did replicate the inner mind of vincent van gogh this is the fantastic phenomenon of the creator if lines are stable and if there is no movement that seems time is frozen or stopped but when we see vibrating lines are creating that sense of glimpse lines are living that the time is passing and everything is fragile the moment you know now will not remain the same and that is the perspective of an artist that's how you can submerge yourself in the sacred world of the painter remember that tv show where one donkey one monkey and a girl told stories told the stories about indian folk art 
The show name was Christress and Balti Boy. I don't see that anymore on television. TV shows are bombarded by the cheap expressionism of two-dimensional art form. It's not a good excuse that children love these TV shows. Well, you presented them those TV shows. Those TV shows like Chhota Bhim, Mighty Raju. Seriously, and the children will never know what good animation can do in the two-dimensional art form on the surface of a television. When I was little, I was amazed by the animation work done by the artist of TV shows like Chris Triss and Balti Boy because at that time it was available for me to access. Even Japan has its own animation style which we call anime and no one no one can produce anime better than Japan in the whole world. It's a constant struggle by the Japanese artists and filmmakers and the denial to the western animation approach. It's not the right thing that Japanese animators don't know about 3D animation. They just denied that. And western animations are mostly made for children. But the eastern animation, it meant for all. And that's how they made their own individual style. Well, India could do that if we had more shows like Chris Triss and Balti Boy. But we get Chota Bhim. And that's the end of discussion. On this basis, I have made some illustrative works which are the combination of Indian folk arts and TV shows, social environmental issues and other topics. And here are some examples like That's Life from Joker, Breaking Bad, Whatever Happens, Happens Approach from Cowboy Bebop, Mr. Bean and Abraham Lincoln. And by the way, it was my college work. In the end, I will recommend you one short film. Its name is Confusion with Sand. If you want to see the power of line and you don't have much time, you can watch it. Thanks for watching. Reality considers PG-13. Yeah, I I'm pretty jealous. Don't be, Morty. There's pros and cons to every alternate timeline. Fun facts about this one. It's got giant telepathic spiders, 11 9-11s, and the best ice cream in the multiverse.